Look at verse number 19. Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Here Moses leading the children across, getting ready to lead the children across the, the desert, and they say, hey, they begin to mock God. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Hey, you're, 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 there's going to be over 3 million people out here can think you're, how, how do you believe in feed them? Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? It amazes me many times how we underestimate God, don't we? Well, I mean, we say, oh yeah, God can do anything, but then when we're in that valley or we're in a, a trial or, or we've got a big decision to make, why in the world is it, it seems, that we, under, uh, miss, or we underestimate Him? Listen to what the book, uh, the, the Word of God says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto Him, now let's talk about God here. Now unto Him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Here we have one pastor says, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Can God feed you while you're out in the wilderness? Can God feed you when you're out in the desert? And, and I mean, there are no grocery stores out here, folks. There's, there's no farms are out in the desert. Can God feed you? And then we have the other verse says, uh, He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Let's pray, Father, and thank you for loving us. And I'm so glad that you're a God that is able. Lord, we're here tonight. Lord, we need something from your word, and we need something from each other. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to leave here with what it is that we need, that we might serve you more, that we might not falter, we might not fall by the wayside, we might not be turned to the left or the right, but Father, we leave with the resolve to serve you and to cling to you. In Jesus' name, amen. As I said, it never ceases to amaze me how that we seem to place limitations on God. We say, oh, well, this is impossible right here. This circumstance I'm in right here, this situation of life I'm in right here, this, this uh, obstacle that I'm facing here, well, there's just no hope with it. There's, there's no way to get around it. It's, it's too high. I can't get over it, and, and uh, I can't get through it. And, uh, the, it's all over. Might as well just throw in the towel, and we give up on God. We, we place limitations on it. The Word of God said that the children of Israel, they bound God's hands. It was their lack of faith, their lack of trusting Him, and they, they bound His hands. He, I, I want to fight your battles for you, He said. I want to give you the promised land. Listen, uh, they came to the River Jordan more than once. They came twice to head to the promised land. They came the first time, and they did not cross because they said, hey, we look like grasshoppers in their sight. And they look like giants to us. So there's there's just no way. Only two me and Joshua and Caleb said, hey, they're right. We look like grasshoppers. They look like giants. They have great walled cities. They're right. It's impossible. Except for this, fellas. We have God. Amen. But because the majority said, no, we, we cannot do it. They're, they're lack of faith in God. God said, okay, this whole generation will pass away. Only Joshua and Caleb are going to enter the promised land. The rest of you will die before you can enter the promised land. And sure enough, all those that were above that certain age there, they all died. When it came time to cross into the promised land again, here's Caleb, 80-something years old, saying, hey, let me at him. Let me, hey, that mount over there, it was promised to me. It's mine. I'm still as strong as I ever was. My strength is not abated. I'm ready to get with it. And Joshua was there to lead the way. Everybody else was younger. They were the only two left. Why? Why couldn't they go in the first time? Because they underestimated their God. Over and over again, you'll see uh, where God says, if you'll just do this, I'll take care of you. And the children of Israel say, oh, no, we can't do that. They told Jeremiah, hey, find out what it is that God wants us to do. We'll do it. He found out what God wanted to do. He said, now, God doesn't want you to run to Egypt. You stay right here. God will take care of you. And they said, well, we're going to Egypt. There's no way God could take care of us here. And then, I mean, look, we're surrounded by the enemies. They left, they kept underestimating God. Listen, can God do these things that we, we say He can do? But when it comes down to where the rubber really meets the road, can God? Well, yeah, God can. I think it was Harold Seidman who used to preach a sermon. Uh, was it Harold Seidman? Can God? 
God can. Now I'm in the way trying to reproduce his sermon. There is no way possible to hold a candle to Harold Seitler the way he preached that. But I do want to, to bring some things to your attention right here. God, is God able to help us overcome? Hey, is he able? You've got maybe a vice in your life. Maybe you, you've got a stronghold in your life, something that, boy, that plagues you. You try to get past it, but it, it's that besetting sin that it comes back on you. Maybe you've got a financial problem. Maybe you've got physical problems. Maybe you've got uh, 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 emotional problems. Can we overcome? Can he help us overcome? Listen to this. 1 Samuel 17, 33. Here's David. Just a young man, probably an older teenager at this time. He had never been in a war. He was a shepherd boy. He didn't know how to use a sword at this point. He didn't know how to use a shield and a spear. All he knew how to use was a little sling with some rocks. All he knew how to use was a shepherd's staff. And hey, he had defeated a lion with those things. He had defeated a bear with those things. But now he comes to the battlefield and on the opposite mountain, there's the army of the Philistines. And on this mountain, there's the, the armies of the Israelites. And boy, they're pitched in battle against each other. But nobody's fighting. <coughs> David rolls up in the chariot or in the car. He, he shouts for the battle. He cheers them on. Hey, let's get them, boys. How's things going? They begin to talk to him and say, hey, you're here to cause trouble, aren't you? Here, here comes Goliath, that big old giant. And David says, and he begins to curse God to defy the armies of Israel. Goliath says, send out your champion. Send him out and, and we'll fight against each other. If he beats us, then you win the war. Nobody else will have to die. But if I beat him, you become our servants. David looks and says, hey, won't somebody go cut his head off? Look, look at it. Hey, look, he's a giant. I mean, look, his shield is bigger than we are. Look at that spear. Look at that sword. There's no way. Haven't you? That's a lion. Haven't you heard of how many people he's killed by himself? There's no way. David said, is there not a cause? Hey, he's cursing the gods of it, the God of Israel. Is there not a cause? He goes to Saul. Saul calls for him. He hears of that talk and Saul calls for him. And here's what Saul says. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go up against the, or to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. He said, David, there's a giant out there. Well, how many of you have a giant in your life? Well, we all face them from time to time. And I'll tell you what, I still face them from time to time. There's a giant in our life. Sometimes, as I said, that's an advice, uh, uh, something, uh, 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 a stronghold in our life, a besetting sin. And it may be a worry, an anxiety. It may be a situation we face. But it is a giant in our life, and it's keeping us from serving God. It threatens to, to cause us to quit or to run. But listen to what David says. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. That's what he says to Goliath. He said, Goliath said, hey, what are you? They sending a little boy to do that work? They're sending a, a little dog to fight me. David said, hey there, Goliath. I'm going to cut your head off. And all this assembly, all your army, all my army, they'll know that the Lord doesn't save with just sword and spear, Goliath. For the battle, it belongs to God. And although you're a giant and I'm just a little boy, you're a warrior, I'm just a shepherd, the battle is God's and He is able to deliver you into my hand. Can God help us to overcome? Yes, God can, folks. The reason sometimes we have such difficulty in, in overcoming those is because we won't let Him help us overcome them. Well, we try to do it our own way, in our own might, in our own power. Boy, I'm going to lay this vice down, and I'll not touch it again by my sheer willpower. Listen, your willpower, you're aligned in your own strength. And that strength is finite. You better learn how to take it to God. Can God help us to overcome? Well, certainly God can. Hey, in life, sometimes we come to a point where we just don't understand. You ever been there? Hey, well, I don't understand why this is happening. Hey, God, it, it, it looks, I, I, I thought I'm, I'm doing my best to serve you. And look at all this that's happened to me. Think of Job. I mean, Job was such a good man that God bragged on him to the devil. Hey, have you seen my servant, Job, how he serves me? The devil said, well, yeah. Yeah, you won't let me do anything to him. Hey, you let me do something to him. He'll curse you. He'll deny you. God said, okay, go ahead, but don't touch him. He can touch all his possessions. Boy, he allowed the devil to take away his children and all his wealth. 
Job didn't curse God. He didn't deny him. He said, let me touch his body, God. God said, okay, you can touch his body, but don't kill him. Boy, Job like, breaks out with welts all over him, boils all over He's sitting in ashes, scraping himself with pieces of pottery. His wife tells him to curse God and die. Now those who, who admire him and respect him, they accuse him. Yet in all these things, Job just kept serving God. Don't you think sometimes Job thought, I don't understand. Hey, listen. Daniel 5, 8, then came in all the king's wise men. They could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Here's King Belshazzar. He's sitting in the court. He's having a party. He's taking the, the vessels from the temple and he's drinking his wine and dedicating them to his gods. And all of a sudden appears next to the wall just a hand. And that hand begins to write on the wall. Mene, mene, tikel, uparsen. I really don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but there's something like that that's the way it looks in the Bible. Amen. Uh, was I close enough, brother? I guess. I, you don't know me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, he writes that. Oh, well, Shazar, he looks at it and says, oh, what is this? What, what? Do y'all see the hand? They all saw the hand. It's right on the wall. They look at the wall and they see those words on there. Oh, I don't understand. And there's nobody that can understand. He calls in his magicians. He calls in his wise men. Gets all the soothsayers. They read the wall and they say, boy, that's a, a language we've never seen before. We don't understand what it could be. The, the king's mother comes from him and says, hey, there's a man in this kingdom named Daniel. Boy, he has the wisdom of God. He revealed some secrets to your daddy. I bet he would have understanding. Listen to what Daniel, in Daniel chapter 2, verse 27, he comes in and, and the king says, Daniel, listen, I've heard you've revealed some things to my daddy and that you have the power of God on you. Here, I have something that I do not understand. Daniel, can you give me understanding? Listen to this. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret which the king hath commanded, cannot the soothsayer, or cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, show it to the king, but... There is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets mm -hmm. and maketh known to the king what shall be in the latter days the, the, the dream and the visions of thy head upon uh, thy bed or these. He says, hey, hey, a uh, king, th these others can't tell uh, what this means. They, they uh, I don't have the understanding, but there's a God in heaven that can give understanding. Hey, can God give understanding? Yes, God can. A man brings his son to the disciples. The son, the Bible says, and in the book of Matthew, the Bible uses the word, uh, the dad comes and says, my son is a lunatic. He throws himself into the water and tries to drown himself. He, he throws himself into the fire and he tries to burn himself to death. And, and I, I, I've taken him to all these doctors and, and there's none to heal him. I took him to your disciples and they couldn't help. It says, and I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. In Luke 8, 43, we see somebody else. And by the way, Jesus did. In Luke 8, 43, we see a lady. She's had an issue of blood for 12 years. For 12 years, she's been considered unclean. The Bible says that she spent all her living going to doctors, looking for cures. She couldn't find any. Hey, for 12 years with that issue of blood, she couldn't go into her home with her husband. For that 12 years with that issue of blood, she was not able to go into the home with her children. She had to, to stay away apart from the family. She was considered unclean. But she could find, hears of a man, a man that could heal the blind. She hears of a man, that man could heal the deaf. She hears of a man who shouted, Lazarus, come forth, and the dead man came forth. She hears of a man who fed over 5,000 with a few loaves and a few fishes. And, hey, she hears of this man. She says, boy, if I could just meet him, if I could just meet that man, then maybe he could do what the doctors couldn't do. And she meets this man. His name is Jesus. He's coming down the road. Man, there's a mob thronging him. They're all wanting him. Hey, touch. Here's a blind person. Here's a deaf person. Touch their eyes. Touch their ears. Give him healing. And she says, oh, if I could just get to him. If I could just reach out and but touch the hem of his garment. And the Bible says she reached out. And that crowd, that throne, she touched the hem of, the, hem of his garment. And the blood, that flow of blood was staunched. It stopped. Immediately Jesus turned. And he said, who touched me? Well, he knew what had happened. Hey, can God give healing? 
Yes, He can. Hey, can God give understanding? Yes, He can. We see in Mark chapter 5, verse 4, in a little town called Gadara, we see a man that's a demoniac. He's a crazy man. He lives among the tombs. Hey, they tried to listen to this. Because that he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Here's this man, he lives among the tombs, and the night he howls, he screams, he, he's unclothed, his hair is long and matted, he's dirty, long nails, he scratches and claws and cut himself in the tombs and, and screams and yells. He's a crazy man. They tried to tame him. They tried to bind him with fetters and bind him with chains. And boy, in that demonic strength, he would burst them asunder and chase them off. The Bible said that no man could tame him. Oh, but we see in Mark chapter 5, verse 15. He's met a man, a man named Jesus. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion, now listen, sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Hey, can God change a man? Amen. Yes, God can. Hey, can God take a, an alcoholic and still clean him up and use him? Yes, God can. Amen. Can God take some drug addict and, and clean him up and change him and, 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 and put him, make him a choir member or a bus captain or hey, even a preacher? Yes, God can. Can God take a man with a filthy, vile mouth that curses, curses the God that loves him? Can God take that man and save him and change him? Then yes, God can. Hey, can God change a man? Yes, God can. Can God give healing? Yes, He can. Can He help us overcome? Yes, He can. Can God give understanding? Yes, He can. Hey, can God save? Can He save? Listen to this, Romans 8, 3. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. See, the law couldn't say, man. The, 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 the idea of, boy, if I obey the law, if I'm just good enough, then I can get to heaven. We can't be that good. The law could not say, the law just exposed us for what we were. It just showed us that we were sinners. And boy, that Old Testament law it wasn't able to say, but so it says... <coughs> For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Hey, through Jesus Christ we have salvation. Hey, the law couldn't say. They said, oh, it's impossible. We'll never be able to get to heaven. There's none righteous. No, no not one. Well, all we like sheep have turned astray. Everyone we've gone our own way. He said, oh, what Jesus? Hey, what about that demoniac? Nobody can help that guy. Jesus, he's crazy. Stay away. He'll call you. He'll try to cut you. Oh, and what is this? He's sitting now clothed and in his right mind. Hey, nobody can help that lady. She's been bleeding for 12 years. They can't stop it. Nobody can help her. Nobody can cure her. Except for Jesus. Hey, look, here's a problem before us. We don't understand what this means. We, we can't find uh, any understanding in it. But God can give understanding. Hey, God can save. God can change. Listen to this. Daniel chapter 2, verse 10. The word of God said, the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such a thing at, the, at, the, uh, at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. Here the king he had a dream. He said, hey, I, this dream woke me up. I, I don't know the answer. I don't know what it means. As a matter of fact, fellas, I don't even remember the dream. I just remember it shook me up. I need, you're my wise men. You're my astrologers, my soothsayers. You're my magicians. Tell me, what does the dream mean? They said, Cain, tell us what the dream is. He said, I don't remember. King, no man is able to tell you your dream. Nobody. King, that is an impossibility. 
king says, then I'll have you all killed. And Daniel comes along. Hey, give us a few days here, king. Give, us, give me just a few days. And he, he prays. God gives him the dream and the interpretation. And then Daniel goes before the king and he says, hey, I have the answer. Hey, everybody else thought it was impossible. Can God change this man? Yes, God can. Can God heal these people? Yes, God can. Can God give answers to the things we don't understand? Yes, God can. Can He give understanding? Yes, He can. Can He give strength? Yes, He can. Hey, listen to this. In Numbers 13, 31. Here's the, the 12 spies that come back, the 10 give a negative report and they say, but the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. They weren't lying. They said, look, there's, there's giants over there. But we're, we're, we're small compared to them. There's giants. We're not able to go over there. That's right. But God Joshua and Caleb stepped forward and said, they're right, there are giants over there, those walls are great, the city walls are great, they're, they're impenetrable by us, but God promised us something. And boy, we read, as, uh, when Joshua and Caleb finally, 40 years later, took the children of Israel across the Jordan River, what they did, they conquered the land. Why? Because we have a God that can, folks. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Help me out. Amen. God can. Hey, can God create all that there is out of nothing? Say it with me. God can. Hey, can God close the lion's mouth? Yes. Oh, you're catching up. I feel like Mr. Rogers up here. <laughs> hey, can God make a dry path through the midst of a sea? Amen. Hey, can God bring water out of a rock? Can God give victory over a giant? Hey, can God keep you safe in the midst of the fire? Hey, can God give healing of body, mind, and soul? Hey, can God bring peace where once there was turmoil and confusion? Hey, can God make a hardened heart tender once again? Can God, you don't say it like you believe it now, come on. Can God give understanding in the midst of life's confusion? Amen. Hey, can God save an old sinner? Amen. Can God take a broken life and put it back together? Amen. Can God change a man? Amen. Hey, thank you. Can God restore a broken family? Amen. Hey, listen, whatever your question, whatever your dilemma, whatever your trial, Whatever your heartache, whatever your circumstance, remember these two words. God can. But I've been to the doctors and they say it's hopeless. God can. By the way, God can heal. Listen, listen to what the three Hebrew children said right before they were thrown in the fire. They said, oh king, our God is able to deliver us. They didn't say God can. They then said, but if he doesn't, King, we're still not going to worship your God. Because if he, if he allows us to burn in there, it's because he had a purpose for it. King. Hey, God can. Mm -hmm. God can. God can. What is it that's got you all bent out of shame? What is it that has you feeling like throwing in the time? Pastor, I've been to the psychiatrist and psychologists. They say they can't help me, but God can. I've been to the doctors. They said they couldn't help me, but God can. I've watched every episode of Oprah and Dr. Phil. <laughs> that hasn't helped me, but God can. Oh, but I, I've gone to this, this, oh, I'm not this group of novels and this group of novels. They haven't been able to help me, but God can. I've read all the self-help books and, and I found no help. But God can. Hey, I've been trying to wash away the problems in the bottle and it doesn't help me. I wake up the next day and they're there bigger than ever. God can. Hey, I, I've been popping these pills 
I'm trying to uh, to take enough where I'm to make my problems go away is not helping. But God can. God can. Hey, I've gone to this counselor and I've, I've done this and I've done this. I don't know what to do. Hey, just stick with God because when nothing else works, God can. God can. God can. Amen. The problem is we don't let him. We, we stop short. We think that because he's not doing things the way we want him to, that he's not doing things. <clears throat> but listen, God has a plan. And if you'll just you'll get look, even in the Bible, God is good. What, Miss Thurston, diagnosed with this neuroendocrine tumor, right? But it's still a type of cancer stage four. Taking chemo. I don't know where it's going to lead. And they don't know either. I have no clue. But I know this, that they'll keep the attitude they have right now and they'll keep on just trusting the Lord. Whatever happens, God is going to use it for some good. He's going to, and He already has. It amazed me. I think if my wife got that diagnosis prognosis, whatever osis it is. I hope that I can handle this good as y'all have. I hope I can. Can't say it until I've been there. I hope I never have to face it. Just trusting in God. Say in the midst of the trials, boy, God's been answering our prayers. God's been doing some good things in our family. How can they do that? They're just counting on God. They're just counting on God. I've had this song going through my head all day. I want to sing it for you, okay? Not because I'm a good singer, but I just want to sing it for you, okay? You can feel free to clap or throw money. <laughs> just kidding. It goes like this. I cannot make the world Hold it in my hand. And I cannot make the lightning flash across the land. And I cannot take a piece of clay and mold it into man. But I have a father. I have a father who can. Amen. He sits high and he looks low. And he guides my feet wherever I go. Oh, oh, oh. I don't understand. I have a father. I have a father who can. I cannot make a cloud ascend in the sky. And I cannot love humanity so much that I would die. And I can't even name the stars or count the grains of sand. I have a father, I have a father who can. Amen. Hey, listen, there's a lot I can't do. There's a lot the doctors cannot do. There's a lot the psychiatrists and psychologists cannot do. There's a lot that your boss man cannot do. There's a lot that your preacher cannot do. There's a whole lot that you cannot do for yourself. But listen, folks. We have a God who can. Right. He looks at Job. He said, Job, I have, I have just one cubit to your stature, I think, in about it. Make yourself grow, Job. Can you do that? Oh, no, God. I can. Job, tell the winds where to go. Tell them whether to blow north, south, east, or west, Job. Job, direct the, the path of the lightning. Tell the lightning what, what course to take from the sky, from the heavens to the ground. Can you do it, Job? God, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't. Job, open the, the storehouses of heaven and, and let the snow out of their storehouses. Do you even know where that is, Job? No, I don't even know where to go. I don't know where that is. I <laughs> do and I can do that. Hey, Job, stop the rain. 
and then make it come back again at your bid. Can you do it, Job? No, oh, no, I, I can't do that. <laughs> hey, Job, speak the worlds into existence. Uh, you did that before, right, Job? You were there, right, Job, and there was nothing, and then you spoke, right? And, whoo, and uh, Job, try not to fall the steps. Uh, you spoke, and everything came about. Job, you can do that, right? God, I'm just a man. I can. God said, I did it, Job. I can do it. Folks, just a simple thought tonight. God can. Somebody you've been praying for for a long time needs to be saved. Feel like you can't get through. God can. God can. Folks, God can. Everybody bow your head. Close your eyes, please.